What's going on guys, Big Fry here, back to give you my thoughts on H-Hour, the current state of the game, and possibly shed some light on where I think this game needs to go. A uh, game in the background is The Last of Us Multiplayer on the PS4. This is going to be an extended episode, so if you don't have a lot of time, this one isn't for you. Now this whole thought stems from a good friend of mine, Kendrick, uh, the guys who listen to the podcast know him as Buck. He said something on yesterday's podcast that got me really thinking. What he said was, in this industry and how it has changed, SOCOM would be much bigger today with streamers on Twitch and how YouTube is blown up with gaming channels. And you know, he's absolutely right. H hour releasing nowadays could be so big with the implementation of game capture software, live streaming gaming channels, Twitch competitions, you know how they do the eSports. So why isn't H-Hour picking up Steam? Instead, it's going on the decline. So I did a little bit of research and I analyzed what was popular in the market today and uh, with games being developed around the same time frame, of course, as H-Hour. Uh, early, early alpha with, you know, a couple of placeholder models. They got the gun mechanics in there and maybe a couple of maps. So I bring you guys to Steam Early Access and on the top sales for Steam, these games include Daisy Standalone, Seven Days to Die, and Rust. All three of these games are in early alpha stages, much like H-Hour. But let's dig deeper. We'll start with Daisy. Daisy Standalone has been in development for a long time, with early access dating back to December of 2013. That was the release date on Steam. So, with that period of about 9 months, 20 updates have come uh, onto Steam and have been released. The game is still buggy, and it's still missing core features that the Arma 2 mod, from which the standalone spawned, uh, has. However, this game, in the first 6 months of release, racked up almost 2 million in sales, no, that's not dollars, that's copies sold. So, with Daisy standalone rarely going on sale, I'm going to take that $2 million, or two million copies and I'm going to multiply it by an average of around $23. It, it usually sells for $29. I might have missed a sale or two, so I'm just going to take it at $23 and see where it goes. This tells me that Daisy has raised over $46 million in sales. Now, I'm not sure the ins and outs of their company as well as, you know, overheads, but let's say their company keeps a, a generous 16%. That's still $7.3 million in sales. That is insane for a game that doesn't look like it's going to be fully developed in the end anyway. Um, let's go to Seven Days to Die. I actually kickstarted this game back in 2013, and it's gone on to release into early access on Steam. It got greenlit. It's generating a fuckload of interest. Um, at the time of recording this video, Seven Days has 5,367 players currently in the game. Multiply that by an average of $20. That's $134,000 um, amount of players playing. I haven't played this game since its first inception into alpha. I'm kind of waiting for more features. I'm, I'm pretty much waiting for beta at this point. Um, and uh, based on the forums, a lot of people have been waiting as well. So these player numbers I use to show sales aren't as accurate because there are people waiting. There, you know, this isn't really high traffic area for Steam. Um, so I can't, and I can't find the true sales figures for this game. I know based on its Kickstarter, it's at least five hundred thousand because that's what they raised to to make this game possible. Finally, you got Rust. In its first two weeks of sales, Rust generated over three million dollars. Even though it's completely unfinished alpha experience, and yeah, you could tie that to you know Gary's mod and and Gary Newman. Yeah, definitely, definitely, that's what that's what spiked that game. But um, these games are releasing into early access and are all huge hits. My question is why? What propelled these games to the top of the Steam sales charts? Yes, they are all survival games, and right now the industry is completely eating that shit up. But I think the true reason is player marketing. If you guys follow PC gaming channels on YouTube, you know Frankie on PC. He's one of the biggest. Two million subs almost. Games that are featured on this guy's channel are almost instantly popular. Take a game uh, recently called Survive the Night. Frankie posted a video about its struggling Kickstarter, and almost like that, instantly, the Kickstarter was funded. His advertising made that game a possibility, but he's just one guy. Imagine an entire community all playing one game on Twitch, on YouTube, tweeting about it. We already have the tweeting down. We've been talking about this for a long time. We've heard and read it time and time again. I don't care if there's one map. I want to play this game so fucking bad. I would pay more to play an unfinished alpha of H hour than I would to play Call of Duty, Advanced Warf... <laughs> Advanced Warfare. Uh, yeah, that's what it's called. No, I'm, I'm fucking it up. 
Anyway, these players want their hands on this game, and as a company, I can respect SOF for holding back and wanting to give their players a polished, complete product and experience. You guys did it in the past, and I know you have a lot of pressure, and you don't want to fuck it up. I get that completely, and that's respectable. That being said, the fact that we aren't seeing any progress with funding leads me to look for alternatives. This is just me. This is just me spitballing. There's Steam Early Access, which, as I've mentioned, combined with Twitch and YouTube, you guys have your money made. If you choose not to go that route, there's a couple other ways we can fund this without big companies investing, because that seems to be the, the, the staggering point for this. We're waiting for information on the game. We can't get information on the game because nothing is being done on it that we know of. This is just us speculating because... Ever since E3, you guys have been very quiet, and I'm not sure why. You guys got the PS4 dev kits, you guys switched from UT3 to, or sorry, Unreal 3 to Unreal 4, and that's really about it. Um, I, uh, I take examples from games like Star Citizen and Pantheon. I'm going to use Pantheon because it's more along the same development stage as you guys. They had a failed Kickstarter, so what they did, they created donation tiers on their website. And they allow players who truly wanted to be a part of the development process donate on their website. They didn't have to go through Kickstarter. They didn't have to do any of that. They raised $160,000 already and are on the rise. These, this is a great way to give people a, uh, a way to stay closer to the development process. You know, don't give us t-shirts and hats. Give us in-game items on launch and stuff we can actually use. Um, I don't know how you guys are developing it, but if you're going to add customization, maybe give us like a skin or something. Something that we can use in-game that doesn't really cost you a lot of money to produce. You know, like t-shirts and the shipping and all that shit. Cut that out. Erase the middleman. Give us stuff we actually want to see. Not, you know, not saying the t-shirts and the hats and stuff weren't weren't awesome. I still wear mine, but um, this just cuts costs down for you guys. Um, I want this. <laughs> I uh, Trust me, when, when this game hits my hands, this channel is going to be H hour specific for a long time. Um, that's not the reason I'm making this video. I'm not making this video so I, so it, it sounds like a plea so that I can play the game. I want to play the game, yes. But what I also want is for you guys to make the game that you want to make. And I see you guys are struggling. So I'm just giving you my opinion of where we should go with this. Um, you know, it's a win-win at the end of the day. We market your game as a community. We get to play it. I mean, I don't give a fuck if it's early access or not. I don't give a fuck if it's one map or not. I'm willing to play it. And you have a lot of people on Twitter, on YouTube, and on Twitch who were willing to play it, who are willing to put their time and effort in. You know, there are ways to get this thing funded, and I'm just throwing my two cents in. <clears throat> Matter of fact, if, if you guys decide to open up donation tiers on your website and allow me to playtest the game, I will donate another 300 worth of my cents on top of the 150 I already placed through Kickstarter. I want this funded just as much as you guys do, so I'm going to start leading the charge here. Anyways, guys and gals, thanks for listening. This was kind of a longer episode. I hope you guys like the gameplay in the background, even though I feel like a complete noob. Um, give me your guys' thoughts on H Hour and SOF Studios and, and what you would like to see them do and maybe who you would like to see invest or, or whatever. Just leave it in the comments below. Let's have a conversation about it. Uh, you guys can get me on Twitter, at BigFryTV. And if you guys want to listen to the podcast, there is a link at the top of this channel on the banner, the Digital Fire Podcast. Hit us up on Twitter using the hashtag Digital Fire. We talk about you know general gaming content. Um, and we, we usually tie in a little bit of SOCOM discussion into every episode. So hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for listening one more time. And I will see you guys later.
If you've left, cut them down. 